All right, it's time for some soulful saxophone jazz licks. And in this video, I wanna share a lick you can use in measures nine through 12, last four measures of a one, four, five blues. Are you ready? Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. And if you want more tips to bring your playing to that next level and licks to sound like a pro, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell to get notified when new videos are out. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you a soulful jazz saxophone lick from the Lou Donaldson tune, Alligator Boogaloo, that you can use over a blues. This is a great tune that you could play at jam sessions because the melody is fairly simple and it follows a basic blues form, a one, four, five blues. Now the story behind the song is pretty interesting. In 1967, Donaldson was recording a session for a new album and he was three minutes short of having a full album. So he had to come up with a quick melody, which was this short riff, and the band followed along. Now, not only did they follow along, they really got into the groove with this one, and the track came in at like over six minutes. It eventually became the title track on that new album. I put a link to that original video up here and in the description below. Now this lick starts around one minute and 46 seconds into the video, I think it's the third chorus, and it goes over the five, four, one chords in the basic blues form. Here's the lick at tempo, at speed, and then at a slower tempo. Now the song is in concert C, which is A for alto, D for um, tenor, trumpet, and clarinet. And it's, the lick starts off with a two beat pickup before that ninth measure. Now what's cool about this lick is that he uses both the major and minor pentatonic scales, plus chord tones at times, and adds some inflections like bending notes and a really, I think, a prominent vibrato. Let's first listen for that major pentatonic scale. The one he uses, it doesn't match the five chord or the four chord, he uses the concert C major pentatonic scale, which matches the key of the song. Here's the scale. Now the beginning of the lick uses note choices from that scale. Let me play it slow so you can kind of pick it out. Now listen to this against the chords in the backing track. Now, one of those notes, the last note that I played, the held out one, clashes with that five chord. It's a note choice, again, from the major pentatonic scale, but it's not a note choice from the chord. And this is where most people get caught up. They think that every note from the solo has to be a chord tone. That's not the case with that held out note. That clashy note, it's actually concert C, the root of the song's key, and it's part of the C major pentatonic scale. So, while that note's clashing, it's okay to play it because it's part of the phrase he's creating and the clash creates tension that gets released in the next chord where that C is a chord tone. That's why this sounds good and that's why this practice is not uncommon. All right, moving on. So now he also uses the minor pentatonic in this lick. So here's the concert C minor pentatonic scale. That's A minor for alto, uh, D minor for tenor and trumpet and clarinet. Now this part of the lick uses note choices from that scale. I'm gonna play it slow. Let's listen to it with the backing track. I'll play it from the beginning of the lick. Pro tip time. When the phrase is going up in direction, meaning the melody is going higher, he's using the major pentatonic. You get that brighter sound. When the line is going down in direction, the melody's going lower in pitch, he's using minor pentatonic most of the time. Now this is often used by everybody when they're improvising actually in any genre. So try that strategy when you're improvising. Now the very end of the lick goes back to major pentatonic note choices and it, in fact, it's practically the same as the beginning of the lick without the pickup notes. 
So you could think of this as major to minor to major pentatonic. But honestly, I'm also thinking about how the notes relate to the chords and also his phrasing. Now he also has his own nuances, like how he bends down that, that um, first note on the downbeat of the five chord. Listen to the first part of the lick where this is really obvious. Listen to the first part of the lick where this is really obvious. Now when you're bending on the saxophone, don't drop your jaw, all right? The bend comes from inside your mouth. If you drop your jaw too much, you lose contact with the reed. In my Get a Killer Saxophone Tongue course, I go over how to get that kind of effect, that kind of control over the reed. The link will be in the description below. Now the other nuance that you could only catch if you learn the lick by ear is his vibrato. He plays that held out note straight for about a beat and then just a somewhat fast vibrato like this. Now don't practice vibrato until you have control over your, you know, your regular range of the horn uh, playing the notes straight because if you start practicing vibrato when you're not ready it's going to mess up your tone. Um, a lot of people also tend to bite when they do vibrato and you don't want to do that either. Okay so again I cover this in my Get a Killer Saxophone Tone course. All right I think we covered all the aspects of the lick so now it's up to you to learn it. Here it is again. Hey, do you want the PDF and the backing track? Well, those people that support my videos my, on my YouTube channel get extra goodies like the PDF, the backing track in various tempos, dozens of other video lessons teaching uh, licks for blues, rock, funk, uh, jazz, also mindset and practicing. So if you want to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash Donna Schwartz Music for more info and how you can help support these great videos coming at you. I'd really appreciate your support. I hope you like this video. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel and tap the notification bell so you know when new videos come out. On that note, thanks for joining me. Take care. Have a great day.